easy process. So you have to push the clutch in, put it in gear, let the clutch out a little bit, put it in second gear. You can't just go first, second. You have to put it out first, second gear. Then now you have to stand there with your left foot on the clutch, which is not not really like normal because you're normally used to holding your foot on the brake. But now you have your foot on the clutch and no, like your gas foot's on the brake and you're just looking at the flag like, okay. And then you could sit there for 25 seconds. You're like, this seems like forever. Like now you start seeing stuff with the clutch coming back at you and you're like okay so there's a lot going on in that little bit of a moment then you see the board slide yellow so now you take your foot off the brake you go give it a little bit of gas and it could be instantly he throws the green flag or it could be six seconds he throws the green flag so now everyone revs their motors and we're still not sure what's about to happen you know the pro for only race is way easier it's, he walks up there says everyone's good you look at him you see what he's gonna do yep. boom you know it yeah it's kind of like if i blink shit i'm yeah, gonna miss it exactly okay. and there's dust in the air everyone's exhausts are like burnt your eyes are burning at this point you know the exhaust fumes are in your eyes because it's just sitting yeah oh. and then all the adrenaline the anxiety everything that's happening okay what's this gap how far do i have to catch them what's gonna happen from here yeah and, and the way i always look at it is i always look at it as a pro force gonna yeah no matter what so and usually it happens say if it's a 10 lap race by lap nine if you don't catch you're yeah. supposed to catch them okay. yeah and if it's not meant to be it's not meant to be but say the last few years i've gotten a great start and i'm in the top three um you don't go to battle against the pro forge right away you got to kind of be smart and and most all the top guys here are all the same way like we'll all follow in and be like okay if someone's not holding us up we just got to go because the more time we slide into each other wreck each other it happened uh in 2000 uh the 50th anniversary yeah yeah right here on the land rush everybody just wadded up and you're like okay where do we go yep. uh bryce had a problem me and cj all crashed into him stalled out for like all oh, the race is over i almost just said screw it you know like you know what we'll just keep going got fired back up um, there's only but one pro four for us, it was Doug. Yeah. He ended up having a problem and we were able to still so catch him and win the race. But typically that would never happen. Yeah. Um, so that's why I always look at it as pro four is going to win. If we all do that to each other, then we're just taking ourselves out. So we're all pretty good about, you know, we all kind of know, hey, we got to get through this, this race, pass the pro twos, or once we get, like we kind of, no, the anticipation like ramps up as laps goes on. First three laps is boring. Yeah. Going through yeah. lappers, yeah. nothing's yeah. happening, everyone's watching the pro Seven. twos. Lap four, five, six come around, they're like, oh, I think they might be able to catch them. Lap seven comes around, they're like, oh, they're right on. Lap eight comes around, we're probably passing them right then. And then it's like, okay, now we have three laps to race ourselves. You know, that's kind of how the race so, plays out. The so it's as, into as thirds, as pretty on. much. For the first third, to me, that's okay. how I look at it. Is the first three laps is there's nothing you can do other than harm your own self, unless yeah. somehow, which rarely happens in the cup race, a slow guy gets in front of you, like I got to make something happen, so these guys don't get away from me. Yeah. But if you can see the front guys, the fast guys that you don't have a chance of winning in front of you, you're like, okay, we're going. You got to get through the guys because pro two slow people, up. like yeah. whether or not they mean to, you know, like, you can get a five car gap. Pro two gets in front of them, you can make a move or anything can happen right there. So it's all kind of just staying with each other. I would say we then the second the half, it's seeing, okay, are we catching them? And, put and then the third the third half is like, all right, now I got to get around these guys. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, so being a two time back to back, do you feel more yeah, pressure going into this race? Like, people, obviously, there's a target on your back. People are like, okay, RJ's the one to beat. He's one that he just comes from the West Coast and sweeps it. Um, so, with that, does that give you added pressure or does it give you. Like, does it make you feel good or like? No, I mean, obviously it's rad being able to do it two years in a row, and it's just like I said, it's I'm not trying to go crazy this first round. You know, I we set us up. We come for this puppet. That's what we come out here for. We don't come out here to win the last round of points. And that's where you really the world championships would be awesome. I've never won that. I've gotten second twice. Uh, would love to win that one, but it's really the cup. Race, so we don't risk our equipment or anything crazy on those two races and i think everyone else really does they push everything they come out here they want to win every race in Canada, which why not you know but when so, that green flag drops on the cup it's all on the line for me and it's that's a lot of racing for a pro four three races in a row is tough for a pro four yeah. so uh that's one thing i've been able to kind of figure out is hey let's we're gonna sneak up on this if we finish in 10th the first race we know we got to work cut out for the second one because every time we finish the race, the next race is a benefactor of that race. And that's what a lot of guys have done these last few years. And a lot of these guys are in points. I'm not. Yeah. So I can throw away this first race and say like, hey, car's not right, let's get it fixed or let's use this as a test, you know? Uh, the race has fallen into our favor both times in a row these last two. So 
I kind of like took a step back and I've let it kind of play into our favor and say, hey, we're when the green flag comes that cup race, we're ready to go. We need a good start. We need to go to battle. Um, a lot of hounds in those cup races. Uh, two, I mean, uh, yeah. uh, one long thing long I was kind of bummed about the last two is people like, oh, well, you only yeah, you only won because other people so broke. Sorry. Well, it's I mean, the last so two cup races. The first one it was Bryce, CJ, me. Mm -hmm. We all crashed into each other. I ended up getting out of there. Was able to win. The last race, Kyle was the only pro four in front of me. Kyle broke, so one person broke, and I won the race. It's like. I mean, yeah, one truck. Though, but the thing but, is, is you still have to finish yeah. in order to finish first. Then it'd be one thing if I was in ninth place, yeah. and all of a sudden eight people broke, <laughs> and I got <laughs> first, you know. But literally last year, yeah. I was second off the start. No one got around me. Kyle, right in the last lap, had a problem. They would get around him, and then I passed Doug, who was a pro too, right at the end. But I mean, that was the only problem of the whole race, you know. So well, even even with that ride, it was a second place. And about uh, races in a row is a true testament of how well the truck is built. You have to be able to make it, make sure the belts aren't getting hot, make sure, you know, radiators aren't getting clogged with dirt, which speaking of that rain, Saturday or tomorrow, I mean, you can tell us about too, but Saturday it's going to rain. With that being said, Sunday, you've obviously seen this right here at the barn turn. Blue groove's already starting. The further out you go, you're going to get stuck. So what happens if it's just a sloppy mess? The rains, the rains gnarly, and I'll be the first to say, I come from the West Coast, I'm not a mud master by any means. Uh, I came here in June though, and we got some rain. So I got a little experience in it. I raced basically the whole race absolutely blind. Yeah. Uh, learned some things, a couple things that we could fix, you know, for if it, those conditions happen again. Uh, it's a little humid back then, which it's not as much so now, which would help our situation, but yeah, I'll be the first to say, coming from the West Coast, the rain is definitely not going to be my specialty, but the rain is really hard on parts, equipment, everything. The guys, uh, after a mud race, it's twice as much work just cleaning the car, let alone fixing everything else. So uh, we have the luxury, along with a couple other people here, like the Travises, the Bryces, uh, we're not in points. So if the mud comes down and we need to save our equipment, we can, you know? Mm -hmm. With that being said, we need that starting position. So it's a fine line, but uh, we're ready if the mud comes. Hope it doesn't, Hope but it it's doesn't. just another another factor here in Cranston. Yeah. Um, okay, and then now, obviously, going back to the Pro 2 with the cup race, you have people like Tanner, who's out there. Tanner loved it. He said this first time, and, you know, it's different. Going forward, who is a big competition in Pro 2, or who to look out for that could give the Pro 4s a run for their money? That'd be like, yo, we're actually pretty fast. We can drive. Yeah. I mean, the first person you got to think of in Pro 2 is Keegan, you know, yeah. this, is his, this is his house. Um, the very first year, the 50th, he was the last person I had to pass, you know, um, on the last lap, I was able to pass Keegan. And when it comes to Pro 2s, I wouldn't want to race against him myself, you know, so Keegan has his place dialed. Um, and there's Jared Brooks, Mickey Thomas, who yep. was fast qualifier today, and Ryan B. I would say those four guys um, are going to be running up front. If you can catch them on their own, it's not a big deal in a Pro 4. Our speed's at the end of the race, so luckily we don't catch them in the beginning because at the end, a Pro 4 is so much more versatile. Throwing it in, they have to chase the fish in here. There's nothing they can do down now. So if we catch them individually, not a big deal. If we catch all four of them battling, that's a big problem for us because they are all going around to try to pass each other. It doesn't leave us much room because the Pro 4, while it doesn't look like it, takes up a lot of room on the track yeah. for passing. You and know, it's not to throw it sideways. Great at uh, turning. And Keegan's back in the Pro 4, exactly. which is Jamie's Pro 4, yeah. but Keegan hasn't driven a Pro 4 since 17. Yep. That's what Jeff was saying. Yep. So he's that. Obviously, Keegan's probably going to go with the Pro 4 in the cup race. Yep. Yeah, it'll so. be interesting. Keegan was really fast in the Pro 5. I've seen him in the race. Uh, he, I mean, he took Jenkins. <laughs> yeah. Are you recording? Yeah. I'm like, he took Jenkins Pro 4 and Mike couldn't win the yeah. podium. And he, he almost won it. Yeah, he won it. In, he did win it. He yeah. won it in Jenkins yeah. Pro 4. Yeah, so. Pro 4 no one took serious. So yeah. he gets around here good. I mean, it doesn't matter what class he's in. Everyone yeah. has key and can get around this place. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he runs. I'm, the nice part for Keegan is he gets to see you. Like if there's mud or whatever, he could just park the Pro 4 and be like, I'm saving it for the cup race. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new truck or vice versa. Because he's no points and stuff. They do the, the last race of the day and they're like, what are we racing? All hands on deck on that car. Yeah. You know? So um, it'll be interesting to see what he chooses because I think he can have a strong advantage in the Pro 2, but as it's I said before, it's just, they're sitting ducks. Yeah. You know, the, the fun part is the chase and the yep. Pro 4s. If nothing happens, I believe we'll win this race every time. So. Okay. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what Keegan chooses, uh, but there's a lot of good, I mean, even more than I mentioned, there's six 
Pro 2 guys that can win the race. Yeah. So I would say there's eight Pro 4 guys and six Pro 2 <laughs> guys that can win the race. So there's 14 possible cup race winners. So true to any given Sunday, yeah. anything could happen. Everyone finishes straight up. You could get eighth place and be like, dang. And I, 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 I tried. Yeah. Well, and then you got the Greaves and the Ledoux battle and going for there. And obviously what we've seen throughout the whole season is you just let them battle each other and hey, they might end up taking one of each other out. So how, when something like that, how do you keep your head in the game? Like, okay, they're, they're out, they're out. Like you said, you only had Ledoux was the one, but there's a possibility based on where you start. You know, obviously everybody wants to start at the inside, the first, get out there, take the whole shot. but. If they do that, or the many restarts, how do you like stay calculated? I guess. Uh, I mean, at some point, everything goes out the window. You know, you can have a plan going into it, and that's what we've been able to do the last two years. We kind of had a plan, we stuck to it, and it worked. You know, um, I think that people have probably caught onto that plan a little bit. You know, there's guys here that aren't in points that are going to be able to sneak up on it like we do. You know. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. After the first race, you kind of know where everyone stands. You know, you know where everyone's going to start for the World Championships, and that goes into the Cup race. So uh, the gloves always come off first race. A lot of these people that haven't been racing, you know, like Price, Pastrana, and everything, yep. they want to just go out and win every race they can. So um, I've been racing all year, I'm not on the points like a lot of these guys, but I've had I've had my share of going for the podium, and I know what I'm here for. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. No, that's good. No, I just, it's it's good to chat, just obviously, because I, Haley does everything still, so it's good, it's good to talk to everybody. And talking about strategy and everything, what's happening with the mullet this time? <laughs> Are you going to, obviously you can't have one. I brought the mustache. You brought the mustache, so is it the mustache year? Well, the, the deal about the mullet is, anyone that stops by, first one's free. So I'll give you a mullet, like even you, I can give you a mullet. <laughs> Sure. I'm, I'm positive. Yeah. I, I don't need a mullet. Think about it. Sleep on it. Sleep on it. Yeah. I, uh, I I don't know if Marty would be happy if I had a mullet on Sunday. But, but the first one's free. That is true. And the first year I won at the 50th, yes. uh, one of my buddies, Chris, from Tech Media, cut him a mullet. I taped his hair to the back of my head. I remember that. Good luck. Yep. Still have the hair. It's taped to the back of the cup trophy. Line. So it could go down in history. Okay. So is it just the mustache year? Just the mustache, yeah. At my age, I would have had to start growing my hair two crannons ago to get a mullet. Yeah. So it's a big commitment. Um, but I'll still cut anyone. First one's free. First one's if I've serviced you before, then you have to pay for this. And how much is a mullet cut? Well, I haven't had any two-time return <laughs> customers. I thought you were just going to say $69. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Maybe $6.9. $6.9. Yeah, $6.90? I... Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thank you, RJ. No problem.